Okay, <laughs> coffee is ready. You just use two packets of this with uh, enough water for our travel mugs. And hopefully this will help Derek get up <laughs> and get going. I say Derek, I mean me too. And I'm not, I'm not the best at just pouring out of the pot, so I have to spoon it. We don't have a ladle, so this is the next best thing. And coffee is served. Awesome. Thanks, Anne. You're welcome. Wow. Another massive hydroelectric dam, which explains all the electrical wires along the way. This is Manic Sank, uh, or Manic 5. I've already uh, passed Manic 2 uh, and Manic 3. Um, so we're gonna have to look up Manic whenever we get some internet, because I don't know what that word means. Maybe it means dam. Like, dam that's big. <laughs> so another theory for Manic. <laughs> We just passed the, or crossed over the Manicougan River and are on our way to the Manicougan Crater. And so Manicougan, maybe Manic is short for Manicougan. Holy crap. This is crazy. Is it ever? easily make it to the next gas station. Back to gravel, eh babe? Yeah, I'd say so. I guess I didn't drive for very long before you had to take over this morning. <laughs> oh, that's all good. Thank you. No problem. You can take over again when we get back to pavement. All right. Hopefully it's not another 300 kilometers. Yeah, really. And... Pavement! Pavement! Not very good pavement, but pavement! Yeah, really, that's crap pavement, but at least it's not loose gravel anymore. Wow. Just when we think the road can't get any worse, it does.
get off the gravel road. Feels good. Feels real good. <laughs> oh, let's hope they don't take this away from us again. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> the rock. Oh off. my god. Wow. It's funny that they they just had a sign there for uh, tourism information with a phone number. We haven't had cell phone reception in like since yesterday. Yeah, really. It seems a little weird. Whoa. That is gorgeous. That's a big lake too. Maybe that's it. That's the big long lake that comes up before it. Oh no, that is it. We just pulled off the road because we wanted to get a better view of this lake. I know it doesn't look like much from this vantage point, but it's actually the 215 million year old impact crater from an asteroid that is estimated to have been about 5 kilometers or 3 miles in diameter. At about 100 kilometers from edge to edge, this is the largest visible impact crater on Earth. This thing is so large that it's clearly visible on the map of Eastern Canada, and I've been wanting to see this thing in person for years. Despite all of this, there are surprisingly few opportunities to see it from the road, but this is one of them. So while editing this video together, I decided to look into the Manic uh, Sank thing a little bit more, and it turns out that uh, my second theory was correct. Manic is short for Manicougan, named after the Manicougan River, as well as the annular or ring-like lake formed by the Manicougan Crater. Manic Sank, however, is actually the name of the power station on the site, whereas the dam itself is named the Daniel Johnson Dam. Uh, so here's some quick facts for you. At uh, 214 meters or 702 feet tall and 1,314 meters or about 4,300 feet long, the Daniel Johnson is actually the largest multiple arch buttress dam in the world. Its two power stations produce about 2,700 megawatts of electricity and are part of a larger system which delivers power to Quebec, Ontario, and the New England states in the northeastern U.S. Uh, for example, Vermont state alone receives about a third of its entire electricity requirements from the Hydro-Quebec system. Because hydroelectricity is considered clean or renewable energy, Hydro-Quebec is currently playing an important role in helping the New England states to meet regional greenhouse gas initiative commitments. However, because nothing is perfect, uh, some studies have suggested that the reservoirs that are created by the hydroelectric dams can actually release a significant amount of greenhouse gases as well due to the rotting vegetation in the flooded areas. Uh, plus, this massive diversion of natural waterways has a significant impact on aquatic life, uh, the ecosystems in the flooded areas, and also the Aboriginal people whose livelihoods often depend on the rivers and lakes. Uh, a perfect example of this actually is the Cree community of Waskaganish that you may remember from our videos on the coast of James Bay. The Rupert River, where we camped out for a few nights, has actually had uh, 50 to 70 percent of its water diverted over the past five years. Many of the people we spoke to in that community are still just coming to terms now with the impact that that's had on their way of life. In case you missed those videos, we'll actually include a link to those on the screen uh, so that you can check them out. Um, we had some pretty interesting experiences there, so I think they're worth the watch. So that's it for this video, um, but I'd like to maybe just take this opportunity to uh, thank you all again for joining us so far on our journey. All the likes, the views, um, but most importantly the interaction in the, the comment section has been really important to us. We've super appreciated all of the tips and suggestions, the words of encouragement. And so if you haven't already, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. We've got a ton more adventures ahead of us and we would really love if all of you could come along for the ride.